again, my name is Gabe Zona. This is the 15th of March, 2019. Special shout out to Wiley. He sent a rather interesting link in the comments section. Again, folks, if you're not taking a look at the comments, you're missing out on a whole lot. And the link uh, was put up by the last American Vagabond. This was posted on the 15th of March, 2019. Title, Kept Secret for 17 Years, Intel Memo Warned Bush Iraq's Invasion to Create a Perfect Storm. You know, I posted a whole series of videos back then as well, and I said what Bush has done, he's opened up Pandora's box, and we can't close it. Saddam Hussein kept the lid on the Middle East. People were afraid of him. Bush destroyed him. A newly declassified U.S. intelligence memo has been unearthed this week and featured in a bombshell Wall Street Journal report. It proves that the year prior to the Bush administration's 203 invasion of Iraq, the White House was expressly warned in great detail of all that could and would go wrong in the regime change war's aftermath. No different than what happened in Libya. Including the Sunni Shiite sectarian chaos and proxy war with Iran that would define Iraq and the whole region for years following. And crucially, it reveals that seven months before the U.S. invasion of Iraq, American intelligence officials understood that Osama bin Laden was likely alive and well and hiding in northwest Pakistan. Important given that a key Bush administration claim to sell the war was that Saddam Hussein and bin Laden were in league against the United States. The July 2002 memo was authored by William Burns and serving as Assistant Secretary of State for Near Eastern Affairs, and though clearly dismissed by the Bush neocons making the case for war, proved prescient on many levels. Following are some very quick and informal thoughts of how events before, during, and after an effort to overthrow the regime in Baghdad could unravel if we're not careful, intersecting to create a perfect storm for American interests, Byrne wrote in a memo, classified, secret, and sent to Secretary of State Colin Powell. That whole Bush administration needs to be hung. The classified memo's existence was first brought to the public attention through Knight Rider's reporting in July 2003, which sought to reveal at the time there were pockets of dissenting voices in the State Department and intelligence community pushing back against the absurd White House claim that the whole operation would be a cakewalk and U.S. troops would be greeted as liberators. And there's Vice President Dick Cheney's infamous declaration that the military would leave would take weeks rather than months. This is after almost 18 years, folks. Now, 16 years after the start of the war, the perfect storm intel briefing has been made public in fully redacted form, and it affirms, as WSJ reports, diplomats accurately forecast many setbacks, secretarian violence, attacks on U.S. troops, Iranian intervention, and long road to structural change. Out of this came the rise of ISIS, and a continued unleashing of regime change and sectarian chaos on neighboring Syria. The 10-page memo outlines a litany of catastrophic doom and gloom scenarios resulting from the invasion which would destabilize not only Iraq, but unleash sectarian hell on the entire region. You need to sit back and read the entire article. This is exactly what I had said way back then. The Bush crime family is responsible for the murder of, well, over 4,000 of our military men and women and probably 15,000 that have been maimed and crippled for no reason other than profit. That's what this was all about. Halliburton, profit. Dick Cheney, profit. George W. Bush, profit. They don't care who they kill as long as they make a profit. Read the entire article. You need to pass this along to your like-minded friends. You need to repost this on all your social media accounts. The entire document is available at the end of this article. 
the original document. Please read it. Folks, if we had an honest president in a White House, he would round up all of those responsible that put us into an 18-year war that we're still fighting. But we don't have a responsible president in the White House like we thought we'd have. You think I'm wrong? Tell me where I'm wrong. What has Trump done that he said he'd do? Nothing. Read the article. You'll learn a whole lot more that you might not want to learn. Thanks for listening.